Okay, so last week we finished chapter 10 of Charlotte's Web, and today we're going to move on to chapter 11, which is the miracle. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. On foggy morning, Charlotte's Web was truly a thing of beauty. This morning, each thin strand was decorated with dozens of tiny beads of water. The web glistened in the light and made a pattern of loveliness and mystery like a delicate veil. Even Lurvy, who wasn't particularly interested in beauty, noticed the web when he came with the pig's breakfast. He noted how clearly it showed up and, how, and he noted how big and carefully built it was. And then he took another look and he saw something that made him set his pail down. There, in the center of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message. It said, Some pig. Lurvy felt weak. He brushed his hands across his eyes and stared harder at Charlotte's web. I'm seeing things, he whispered. He dropped to his knees and uttered a short prayer. Then, forgetting all about Wilbur's breakfast, he walked back to the house and called Mr. Zuckerman. I think you'd better come down to the pig pen, he said. What's the trouble, asked Mr. Zuckerman. Anything wrong with the pig? No, no, not exactly, said Lurvy. Come and see for yourself. The two men walked silently down to Wilbur's yard. Lurvy pointed to the spider's web. Do you see what I see, he asked. Zuckerman stared at the writing on the web. Then he murmured the words, some pick. Then he looked at Lurvy. Then they both began to tremble. Charlotte, sleepy after her night's exertion, smiled as she watched. Wilbur came and stood directly under the web. Some pig, muttered Lurvy in a low voice. Some pig, whispered Mr. Zuckerman. They stared and stared for a long time at Wilbur. Then they stared at Charlotte. You don't suppose that that spider, began Mr. Zuckerman, but he shook his head and didn't finish the sentence. Instead, he walked solemnly back up to the house and spoke to his wife. Edith, something has happened, he said in a weak voice. He went into the living room and sat down, and Mrs. Zuckerman followed. I've got to tell you something, Edith, he said. You better sit down. Mrs. Zuckerman sank into a chair. She looked pale and frightened. Edith, he said, trying to keep his voice steady, I think you had best be told that we have a very unusual pig. A look of complete bewilderment came over Mrs. Zuckerman's face. Homer Zuckerman, what in the world are you talking about, she said. This is a very serious thing, Edith, he replied. Our pig is completely out of the ordinary. What's unusual about the pig, asked Mrs. Zuckerman, who was beginning to recover from her scare. Well, I don't really know yet, said Mr. Zuckerman, but we've received, received a sign, Edith, a mysterious sign. A miracle has happened on this farm. There is a large spider's web in the doorway of the barn cellar, right over the pig pen. And when Lurvy went to feed the pig this morning, he noticed the web because it was foggy. And you know how a spider's web looks very distinct in fog. And right spank in the middle of the web, there were the words, some pig. The words were woven right into the web. They were actually part of the web, Edith. I know because I've been down there and seen them. It's Says some pig just as clear as clear can be. There can be no mistake about it. A miracle has happened and a sign has occurred here on earth, right in our farm, and we have no ordinary pig. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, it seems to me you're a little off. It seems to me we have no ordinary spider. Oh no, said Zuckerman, it's the pig that's unusual. It says so right in the middle of the web. Maybe so, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Just the same, I intend to have a look at that spider. It's just a common gray spider, said Zuckerman. They got up, and together they walked down to Wilbur's yard. You see, Edith, it's just a common gray spider. Wilbur was pleased to receive so much attention. Lurvy was still standing there, and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, all three, stood for about an hour, reading the words on the web, over and over, and watching Wilbur. Charlotte was delighted with the way her trick was working. She sat without moving a muscle, and listened to the conversation of the people. When a small fly blundered into the web, just beyond the word pig, Charlotte dropped quickly down, rolled the fly up, and carried it out of the way. After a while, the fog lifted. The web dried off, and the words didn't show up so plainly. The Zuckermans and Lurvy walked back to the house. Just before they left the pig pen, Mr. Zuckerman took one last look at Wilbur. You know, he said, in an important voice, I've thought all along that that pig of ours was an extra good one. He's a solid pig. That pig is as solid as they come. You notice how solid he is around the shoulders, Lurvy? Sure, sure I do, I said, Lurvy. I've always noticed that pig. He's quite a pig. He's long and he's smooth, said Zuckerman. That's right, agreed Lurvy. He's as smooth as they come. He's some pig. When Mr. Zuckerman got back to the house, he took off his work clothes and put on his best suit. Then he got into his car and drove to the minister's house. He stayed for an hour and explained to the minister that a miracle had happened on the farm. 
So far, said Zuckerman, only four people on earth know about this miracle. Myself, my wife Edith, my hired man Larvy, and you. Don't tell anybody else, said the minister. We don't know what it means yet, but perhaps if I give thought to it, I can explain it in my sermon next Sunday. There can be no doubt that you have a most unusual pig. I intend to speak about it in my sermon and point out the fact that this community has been visited with a wondrous animal. By the way, does that pig have a name? Why, yes, said Mr. Zuckerman. My little niece calls him Wilbur. She's a rather queer child, full of notions. She raised the pig on a bottle, and I bought him from her when he was a month old. He shook hands with the minister and left. Secrets are hard to keep. Long before Sunday came, the news spread all over the county. Everybody knew that a sign had appeared in the spider's web on the Zuckerman place. Everybody knew that the Zuckermans had a wondrous pig. People came from miles around to look at Wilbur and to read the words on Charlotte's web. The Zuckerman's driveway was full of cars and trucks from morning till night. Fords and Chevys and Buick Roadmasters and GMC pickups and Plymouths and Studebakers and Packards and DeSotos with gyromatic transmissions and Oldsmobiles with rocket engines and Jeep station wagons and Pontiacs. The news of the wonderful pig spread clear up into the hills, and the farmers came rattling down in buggies and buckboards to stand hour after hour at Wilbur's pen, admiring the miraculous animal. All said they had never seen such a pig before in their lives. When Fern told her mother that Avery had tried to hit the Zuckerman spider with a stick, Mrs. Arabelle was so shocked that she sent Avery to bed without any supper as punishment. In the days that followed, Mr. Zuckerman was so busy entertaining visitors that he neglected his farm work. He wore his good clothes all the time now, got right into them when he got up in the morning. Mrs. Zuckerman prepared special meals for Wilbur. Lurvy shaved and got a haircut, and his principal farm duty was to feed the pig while people looked on. Mr. Zuckerman ordered Lurvy to increase Wilbur's feeding from three meals a day to four meals a day. The Zuckermans were so busy with visitors they forgot about other things on the farm. The blackberries got ripe, and Mrs. Zuckerman failed to put up any blackberry jam. The corn needed hoeing, and Lurvy didn't find time to hoe it. On Sunday, the church was full. The minister explained the miracle. He said that the words on the spider's web proved that human beings must always be on the watch for the coming of wonders. All in all, the Zuckerman's pig pen was the center of attraction. Fern was happy, for she felt that Charlotte's trick was working, and that Wilbur's life would be saved. But she found that the barn was not nearly as pleasant. Too many people. She liked it better when she could be all alone with her friends, the animals. So that's the end of chapter 11, and we're going to move on to chapter 12, which is a meeting. One evening... A few days after the writing had appeared in Charlotte's Web, the spider called a meeting of all the animals in the barn cellar. I shall begin by calling the roll. Wilbur, here, said the pig. Gander, here, 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 said the gander. You sound like three ganders, muttered Charlotte. Why can't you just say here? Why do you have to repeat everything? It's my idio, idio, idiosyncrasy, replied the gander. Goose, said Charlotte. Here, 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 said the goose. Charlotte glared at her. Goslings one through seven. Beep, 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 said the goslings. This is getting to be quite a meeting, said Charlotte. Anybody would think we had three ganders, three geese, and twenty-one goslings. Sheep? he answered the sheeps all together. Lambs? he answered the lambs all together. Templeton? No answer. Templeton? No answer. Well, we are all here except the rat, said Charlotte. I guess we can proceed without him. Now, all of you must have noticed what's been going on around here the last few days. The message I wrote in my web, praising Wilbur, has been received. The Zuckermans have fallen for it, and so has everybody else. Zuckerman thinks Wilbur is an unusual pig, and therefore he won't want to kill him and eat him. I dare say my trick will work, and Wilbur's life can be saved. Hooray! cried everybody. Thank you very much, said Charlotte. Now I called this meeting in order to get suggestions. I need new ideas for the web. People are already getting sick of reading the word some pig. If anybody can think of another message or remark, I'll be glad to weave it into the web. Any suggestions for a new slogan? How about Pig Supreme, asked one of the lambs. No good, said Charlotte. It sounds like a rich dessert. How about Terrific, 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 asked the goose. Cut that down to one terrific and it will do very nicely, said Charlotte. I think terrific might impress Zuckerman. But Charlotte, said Wilbur, I am not terrific. That doesn't make a particle of difference, replied Charlotte. Not a particle. People believe almost anything they see in print. Does anybody here know how to spell terrific? I think, said the gander, it's T double E double R double R double I double F double I double C C C C C C. What kind of an acrobat do you think I am? said Charlotte in disgust. I would have to have St. Vitus's dance to weave a word like that into my web. Sorry, 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 said the gander. Then the oldest sheep spoke up. 
I agree that there should be something new written in the web if Wilbur's life is to be saved, and if Charlotte needs help in finding words, I think she can get it from our friend Templeton. The rat visits the dump regularly and has access to old magazines. He can tear out bits of advertisements and bring them up here to the barn cellar so that Charlotte will have something to copy. Good idea, said Charlotte, but I'm not sure Templeton will be willing to help. You know how he is, always looking out for himself. Never, never thinking of the other fellow. I bet I can get him to help, said the old sheep. I'll appeal to his baser instincts, of which he has plenty. Here he comes now. Everybody keep quiet, quiet while I put the matter up to him. The rat entered the barn the way he always did, creeping along close to the wall. What's up, he asked, seeing the animals assembled. We're holding a director's meeting, replied the sheep. Well, break it up, said Templeton. Meetings bore me. And the rat began to climb up a rope that hung against the wall. Look, said the old sheep, next time you go to the dump, Templeton, bring back a clipping from a magazine. Charlotte needs new ideas so she can write messages in her web and save Wilbur's life. Let him die, said the rat. I should worry. You'll worry all right when the next winter comes, said the sheep. You'll worry all right on a zero morning next January when Wilbur is dead and nobody comes down here with a nice pail of warm slops to pour into the trough. Wilbur's leftover food is your chief source of supply, Templeton. You know that. Wilbur's food is your food. Therefore, Wilbur's destiny and your destiny are closely linked. If Wilbur is killed and his trough stands empty day after day, you'll grow so thin we can look right through your stomach and see objects on the other side. Templeton's whiskers quivered. Maybe you're right, he said gruffly. I'm making a trip to the dump tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Thanks, said Char Charlotte. The meeting is now adjourned. I have a busy evening ahead of me. I've got to tear my web apart and write terrific. Wilbur blushed. But I'm not terrific, Charlotte. I'm just about average for a pig. You're terrific as far as I'm concerned, replied Charlotte sweetly, and that's what counts. You're my best friend, and I think you're sensational. Now stop arguing and go get some sleep. So chapter 13 is good progress. I want you to make a prediction of what you think is going to happen next.